a ton of romance options in Stardew Valley, and I have married every single one of them. In this video, I'm going to be ranking every single dateable from the worst option to the best option, based on my professional and totally unbiased opinion. So let's get straight into it. Coming in dead last, we have number 13, Harvey. You might be surprised at this pick, but there is just something about Harvey that I cannot stand. His story is not very strong and quite honestly extremely boring. He remains virtually the same person from 0 hearts to 14 hearts, making for a lackluster story arc. You can probably make the argument that he's grown and doesn't need a story like many of the less mature and younger bachelors. And to that I say, you're probably right. However, I'm the type of person that is a sucker for a good story arc, and Harvey just isn't my cup of tea. Plus, I'm convinced that he's a thief. He steals all of my damn money just to put me in a hospital bed for like 5 seconds. And we gotta talk about those damn planes. Man is obsessed. Moving swiftly along to number 12, where I have placed Shane. Shane is probably the most controversial marriage candidate, a lot of people absolutely loving him or hating him. And while I don't hate him, I line more with the latter. Quite the opposite of Harvey, Shane has a whole lot going on within his story arc. And while his story is for the most part heartwarming and interesting, it has the least satisfying conclusion. He makes all this progress in his life, only for it to be thrown out the window after marriage with a ton of concerning dialogue. He still talks about alcohol and hasn't broken any of his old habits. Exhibit A, his spouse room. A lot of people will say that his marriage storyline represents the ups and downs of addiction. How recovery is a process and not everyone will be perfect during their journey. While I agree, I just think that his marriage storyline doesn't reflect any desire from Shane to improve himself or change his ways. I think that Shane is meant to be a great friend, not a lifelong partner. Penny slots in perfectly at number 11. Penny is a bachelorette that is loved by many, but I find her story to be quite boring and pretty typical. She's our damsel in distress, which is a tired trope that I don't typically enjoy within stories. What sets her apart from Shane and Harvey is that, although boring, her story does have somewhat of a clear arc, and I love the exclusive decorations you get in her 14 heart event. I will literally marry her simply just for the moon and star decals and then boot her out of my house. But the, I'm a sweet girl who reads books and teaches children, just doesn't do it for me. I don't buy it, Penny. In all seriousness, to me, there's just nothing appealing about Penny. Her only redeeming factor is the moon and star decals. At this point, it gets a bit tricky, but I'm gonna throw in Alex at number 10. Now, as a female farmer, Alex being lower in the rankings makes perfect sense. Alex has this sense of toxic masculinity that only resolves if you're playing as the male farmer. He loves to make little snide remarks that piss me the hell off. He wanted to ask me if I wanted to play catch, but didn't because I'm a girl. There are tons of other comments that have two completely different vibes whether you're playing as the male or female farmer. The male farmer typically getting the more positive response. I like the idea of his story. Hardcore jock to sympathetic love interest, but it only really gets that effect if you're playing as the male farmer. For that, he stands above the few before, but won't go above his number 10 ranking. Hot take, but I'm gonna put Abigail at number 9. Abigail is profusely loved by the community, and I just don't get it. Yeah, yeah, she's not like other girls, but that's about all she's got going for her. Everyone loves her because she's got purple hair, and she's a gamer, and I also love her for these reasons, but not enough to throw her above a lot of other options. She's pretty cool being a little cave dweller and strangely a rock eater. Plus, she does have some cool heart events, but I really just don't get the hype, which is why she is where she is in these rankings. For number eight, I'm gonna throw in our man of poetry, Elliot. There's something about the way Elliot acts towards the farmer that comes off a bit condescending. He's a struggling author that thinks he's better than you while you're a little farmer making bank. However, he's got a ton of riz, both before and after marriage. Man literally says, From the brightest winter star to the shimmer of an iridium vein, nothing can compare to my wonderful woman. Like, damn, Elliot! A lot of people are turned off from the boat incident with Elliot, where the dude lurches at you to kiss you. And I think it's kind of weird, but understand that you're already dating Elliot at that point. Can't blame the guy for wanting a smooch. Number 7 has to be our bird girly, Emily. Emily would probably be lower on the list if it weren't for her uniqueness. Her heart events are literal fever dreams, which make Emily fun and interesting. I think she's a nutcase who's always marching to the beat of her own drum, and I love her for it. Also, she makes you an entire outfit for her 14 heart event, and it's funky as hell. However, a lot of the dateables have close friends that are a little too close for comfort, like Sam and Penny or Alex and Haley. But Emily and Sandy are on an entirely different level. I am convinced that they are in love and would also love for their relationship to be reality, which is why Emily gets her place at number 7. I ship them hardcore. Next up, I'm gonna throw Maru in at number 6. Maru has a great story arc, her little gadgets turning into an entire robot, as well as Demetrius being a great antagonist in the story. I like the whole mad scientist chick she's got going on, it makes following her story super fun. Plus, I mean, who the hell can hate Maru? She is honestly the sweetest little thing ever, and I think she deserves so much more love than she gets. Her 14 heart event is probably one of my favorites. It is super sweet, you and her just staring at the night sky and wishing upon stars. Despite her story having some flaws, like you being electrocuted and losing hearts if you tell her that shit hurted. You gotta love her. At number 5, we have another hot take with Sebastian. Now, I understand the Sebastian hype, which is why he's at a deserving rank. Man 
is a little emo frog lover and might need to touch grass, but is still incredibly charming nonetheless. He's relatable to all of us anti-social gamers, which I think is why a lot of people take a liking to him. I like that he struggles with acceptance from his mother and kind of has to deal with not being the favorite, having to measure up to Maru's greatness. But the reason he isn't higher is that Seb takes his frustration out on Maru, which is not fair in the slightest. Maru didn't do anything, but Sebastian still speaks about her like it's all her fault his family treats him the way they do. It's understandable, but we can't forget that Seb is supposed to be grown. It's a little concerning that he misplaces his frustration. Despite this, I still love the little emo dude. Then number four has got to be Leah. Although that statue is hideous, you gotta love Leah for being the girl boss that she is. She's our little cottagecore art girly, and I love the story of the farmer giving her the confidence that she needs to take her career to the next level. Like Maru, she's got an antagonist in her story, it being her ex-partner Kel. You see Leah grow into this badass person, not letting Kel walk all over her like they've done in the past. The girl knows her worth, and I absolutely love that about her. She punches the hell out of Kel, it's actually incredible. And while I still punch Kel every time, it's more fitting to let Leah do it. I can't ignore that Leah is the next best option after Robin, cause we can't marry Robin. And that's likely a reason everyone goes after her. But we still love Leah. Finally, we have made it to the top three. But before we dive into it, why don't you subscribe? It'll make me so happy. Also, comment below your top three dateables. And now at number three, I have placed my little man child, Sam. Objective Sam isn't that spectacular, and a few other marriage candidates do have better overall story arcs. So why is he at number 3? Well, a personal weakness of mine is blonde skater boys with bands and no regard to authority. Can you blame me? From the start of my Stardew Valley journey, Sam has always been my go-to bachelor. I absolutely love seeing his band play in his 8 heart event, and think it's pretty cool that you can choose the genre of music they'll play. I love his reckless positivity, and I think the dude is extremely underrated. How can you hate this guy? Then at number 2, who can forget about Krobus? Now Krobus isn't necessarily a dateable. You can't date him or marry him, but you can can have him as a roommate, and I think that counts for something. He will be a little stepfather to all the kids you already had before Krobus moved in. You can give him hugs, it's so adorable. At first, Krobus is shy and apprehensive towards the farmer. He spent a lot of time observing human behavior, but not a lot of time interacting with humans. But as you progress through his heart events, you begin to create a beautiful friendship with the little shadow man. He is so adorable and absolutely deserving of his number two spot. And finally, taking our number one spot in the rankings, of course we have our baby girl Haley. Haley, along with Shane, is an extremely controversial character in Stardew Valley. She starts off as the ditzy mean girl, so not a lot of people are willing to give her a chance. She'll literally call you dirty, call you stupid if you accidentally give her the wrong gift, and will overall be a huge thorn in your side whenever you interact. She's also so mean to her sister, not wanting to do chores in the house, calling her weird and not wanting to even talk to her. As you progress through her heart events, Haley will begin to lighten up. She'll be less uptight, enjoying the country life more and more as she spends time with you. Her 8 heart event is just precious, the two of you having fun taking pictures and playing with Marnie's cows. Going further, her 14 heart event really shows the progress she made throughout your entire relationship. She hosts a charity cakewalk to raise money for Jazz and Vincent's education. How damn sweet is that? She'll also show interest in mending the relationship with her sister, saying that she began to hang out with Emily more and that she's not so bad after all. The cutest detail is that once you marry Haley, she puts up a heart decal in her spouse room, the very same decal that Emily has in her room. And through all of this progress, she never once loses her Haley charm, being spicy, dramatic, and shopping obsessed. And that concludes the rankings. Baby girl Haley will always be number one in my heart. Make sure to like, subscribe, and let me know your favorites in the comments below. And remember, Lumi's always got you.